This is a video that's about using the software Grid Algebra in the Mathematics Classroom. The software is available from the Association of Teachers of Mathematics and it follows on from a video about making journeys on the grid. This video though concerns introducing letters and using letters. So I'm going to click on the interactive Grid Algebra and just to remind everyone that it's based on the multiplication tables, the grid, the one times table, two times table, three times table, four times table and so on. And a key feature of grid algebra is that you can make movements between these numbers. So going from two to three, we'll be adding one, and going from four to two, we'll be subtracting two. So addition to the right, subtraction to the left, multiplication is coming down, and division is coming up. And so expressions can be built through movements on the grid. More de detail about that is in a different video. So now I'm going to clear the grid. And previously, when talking about journeys, we had placed a number somewhere on the grid and made a journey with that number. and then rubbed out the middle expressions and the task given to students was to find out what is the journey, what journey was made to try and recreate the journey from 13 to this final expression. So where did that journey go so that we can recreate that expression and that helped them learn order of operations. And before I'm about to introduce letters, I do this activity again. So here with students maybe coming up to the interactive whiteboard and moving this in order to recreate that expression. And I would do that a few times with different start numbers in different places and having different expressions and so on at the end of the journey. I would do this a few times because What's interesting here is that the attention is on the operations, it's on the movements. The attention is not on what number we started with. 13 here is pretty irrelevant. What matters is that whatever that number was, it was uh, 2 was added to it and then that was multiplied by 6 and then subtracted. Uh, 18 was subtracted and then it was divided by 2. So the 13 becomes not the focus of attention. The focus of attention are the operations that take place. And that gives an opportunity for a letter to be slipped in instead of the number 13. So having done this activity a few times of recreating the expression, I then maybe say that I'm bored with numbers. I'm going to choose a letter instead. Which letter shall I have? And I choose a letter and and then I do movement straight away so that there may be a reaction to the letter initially but I very quickly start doing something to the letter and say what have I done to, the, to R? Asking them to say divided by 4 and now what have I done? Adding 3 and now what have I done? And so this is something that they're actually familiar with because they've done this activity a number of times so that I'm trying to keep the attention on the operations so that they're not dwelling on the fact that I've decided to put a letter to start with rather than a number. So keeping the attention on to the operations is quite important. And then I might again rub out the middle expressions and ask somebody to come up and recreate the journey to end up with this expression again. So we're actually reproducing a task that they I'm already very familiar with, only this time it happens to be a letter that starts uh, the, uh, the journey rather than a number. And since that doesn't make any difference to the actual task, then I generally find that after a little maybe surprise at the idea of a letter being put in, really it's never mentioned again. It's accepted really quite easily. So we might do similar tasks with letters as we did with numbers and that may include, if I take um, close that down for a moment and get back to the original page, that might include computer generated tasks as well. So there's a make the expression 
task that involves letters and here again I choose there's always different levels to start with so here I've got an expression on the left hand side and I've got to make that expression within the time that I'm given so here I'm dividing by 3 and then I'm going to add 6 and then I'm going to multiply by 3 and then I'm going to add 6 and I've done that within the time and so I will get uh, a point and then I've got a new expression to make and so on so that may be a task that they've done before but with numbers and this time it's a task that involve letters instead and likewise there's another task of finding the journey that involves letters as well where here I have to click on where I think the journey is so I click starting here then I think I'm going to add 18 I'm in the six times table so adding 18 will be moving three along and then I'm dividing by three which would get me to the two times table and then take away two will get me there and when I think I finished I click on I finished and it will tell me whether it's right or not and I've got a new task so those tasks can be done with letters now if I return to the interactive grid algebra grid and get some letters then I'll choose a letter and place it somewhere once a letter's on the screen I can draw a route from that letter or indeed a number in this case it's a letter so I click on the root button and click on starting a route and then I click to where I'd like my route to go and then click back on the button once I finish my route and if I click on the start here the letter X is there and I can drag X on the route and the task for the students would be to write down what would the expression look like at the end if I were to take it along this route so I'm starting with the letter X I'm going to take it along this route and what will it look like the final expression once I've done that so this is something they might do on paper and then someone might come up and either do that route by dragging it or there's another option there's a button here where you can actually get a, a sequence of what would happen to that letter X if it goes along that route so first it's divided by two and then there's four added and so on and so on and this is the final expression we would end up in the cell with a marker 7 on it and here I'd get quite fussy about how people have written things so I with the end of that division line I'm expecting the subtraction sign to be right at the end of it so zip ping take away 3 and likewise the zip click click for add 4 so I'll be quite fussy about the positioning of this because my aim here is for students to become begin to get quite fluent with uh, writing and reading formal notation there are also some handouts that are available in the resources section that relates to this if I were to go on say order of operations then in the handout section there are journeys and here a sheet comes up with a number of these journeys printed out and that could be given to students for them to to write down what the expressions would be if we start with a letter N at the beginning what would the expression look like when you get to the end and so you could also print out um, do screen dumps of various screens and print them out for students to write down the expressions generally I find out I find that writing expressions needs to be worked on even when they're beginning to be familiar with reading uh, formal notation usually the writing it lags a little bit behind the reading of formal notation so if I go back to the main menu and interactive grid algebra and have some letters available this time I could uh, 
let me think, put a, a letter somewhere, and then I might put another letter somewhere else. So I've got two letters on the screen. And the task for students is to think about if I made a journey from one letter to the other, for example, this one, then if I put a magnifier in here, then it tells me what S is in terms of P. So I've made a journey with P to get to S and it tells me what S is in terms of P. And so students are maybe are given the task of trying to express what would S be, S be in terms of P or what might P be in terms of S. In fact you could have a whole load of letters on the screen So let's go and collect a number of letters. And we can put them in different places. And we can put them in different places. And then students might be asked to write all these letters in terms of X, for example. So if I made a journey from X to each of these letters, what would the letters be in terms of X. And then you might say, OK, I'd like them all in terms of W, please. And this could be done either with uh, this screen shown on an interactive whiteboard or indeed it could be a sheet that could be given out to students. And they could be checked by actually making those journeys on the grid to see whether they're right or not. Sometimes it might be useful for students to have uh, copies of the blank grid which is available in the resources section of the software for them to write on on tasks like this and other tasks. Another idea with letters is the idea of making codes. I'm going to load a grid that I've prepared earlier and this is a grid that has obviously filled up with different letters. One thing to note with this grid is that there are actually 30 cells here. There are 26 letters in the alphabet of course. So some have got a replication of the same letter. So we've got an E here and we've got an E there. Now there's an issue about E appearing in both in two places. Uh, it would have to mean that the number here is the same as the number there within the grid. So you can't just put two copies of the same letter anyway. More about that later. But with this grid of letters I do a little uh, code here by giving someone an expression like P plus 4 and they have to work out what letter that is. So if you do a journey that is P plus 4 you actually get to the letter I. So P plus 4 is a code for the letter I. And what I have is a sheet with a number of expressions written in it where students have to work out what the letter is. So in this case P plus 4 ended up at the letter I. So I would be the first letter. Then we've got Z minus 15. So if I go back to grid algebra, here's Z minus 15. I'm in the 5 times table, so 5, 10, 15. That will be the letter S. So the next letter in that code is S. So S would go here. And likewise each of these will represent a single letter and then when all the letters are written here it will make a sentence. And here we've got another code with much more com complicated uh, expressions and often students really like some complexity and quite uh, engage in the idea of trying to work out where they would end up given each of these uh, expressions and which letter then would be in that cell. So I picture students having a copy of this grid that they can use and work with along with the uh, codes. And of course then another activity is that they can create their own codes for somebody else to decode. OK, now I'm going to clear this grid and I'm going to take a, a letter and make a, a journey. And in this 
case we've got the letter K being taken on the journey. K at the moment could be any value. The icon up here has got no numbers inside it, this grid, and that indicates that the grid is not defined at the moment. So K is a variable. It could be any number as long as it's in the five times table. But however, I could choose a particular value for K. So let's choose the number 40. In which case, if I put a magnifier in here, it will tell me that K and 40 are in the same cell. So K is 40, 40 is K. And so if K is 40, then we ended up with this expression. What number should be in here then if K is 40? So I get students to not say K, but say 40. And so I point to this and they say 40. Then divide by 5 plus 3 multiply by 4, take away 8, and so we carry out those operations and work out uh, what number should go here. And so in this case I believe it's 36, so I'm going to drag 36 into that cell and it's accepted so it must be right. And so we found out that this expression then must equal 36 if k is equal to 40. And so we're beginning to do substitution tasks. So I'm going to close those down. I'm going to rub out the numbers again. And when I rub out the numbers, then this icon will not have any numbers in it again because we're back to a, an undefined grid. And so sometimes I stay with the same expression for a little while, putting in different numbers for k so that they get a sense that k is a variable. It could be um, a different numbers. It doesn't have to be a single one. And so again, if k this time is 55, then what number should be in this expression. So if I were to put a, a letter in and make a journey around the grid, supposing I do this journey, so the expression's reasonably complex and um, but if I know that R for example is 45 then in fact, because I know it's in the three times table and that expression is just one cell to the right, then in fact that will be the next number in the three times table. It would be 48. So in fact I don't have to do much work with this expression at all to know that it's 48. But if I put a magnifier in both of these cells, I can hide the grid. And in this case, actually I do have to do the work. The grid isn't there to help me. So sometimes that's a nice feature. And I'd have to take uh, work out that it's 45 divided by 3, add 3, and so on, in order to work out this 48. I can still grab 48 and put it in that magnifier, and if it's correct, it will uh, appear there. And there are tasks here that relate to substitution. And I choose my level of difficulty again. And here I'm told that D is equal to 8 and I have to drag in the number that relates to this expression down here. So I've got uh, 6 times 6 is 36 so it looks like it's 30. And so I drag in the number 30 in there and I get a score and then I'm on to the next challenge. And for the first 10 questions the grid uh, is available and sometimes is support but from the 11th question onwards the grid is uh, hidden and so we're just left with the, um, uh, the value of the letter along with the expression and someone will have to work directly on the expression. And obviously there are paper tasks that could be given to students to, to do substitution tasks and in fact in the resources section there is a, a sheet there with uh, some sub substitution questions. Lastly, I'm just going to talk about the possibility of having more than one of the same letter. So if I were to choose a letter and place it here, then at the moment the grid is not defined, but it's possible for me to place another copy of this letter somewhere else, and not all cells will work. But if I place it in this cell, for example, you will see the icon up here has numbers in it that means that this grid is now defined. So it is now quite unique. There is a unique number that M must be if this number in this cell is going to be the same as the number in that cell. 
so if the number of the yellow cell is the same as the number in the blue cell then there is a unique value for m and in fact we can begin to give a little clue by making this m join with that m and this is a little clue about uh, helping me maybe think about what that number must be for m and if I manage to work it out uh, then I can always um, get what number I think it is and drag it in in this case 8 has been accepted so indeed it is 8 if I were to drag 8 over here it would also be accepted and if I were to click on the numbers we can actually see the whole surrounding grid with those two eights in those positions so there can be something quite interesting uh, some interesting challenges about finding places where you can put more than one copy of the same letter and then try to work out um, what value that letter must be and indeed there is a, a computer generated task that's based on that idea which is called make them equal okay that's going to be the end of this uh, video about grid algebra and it's available from the Association of Teachers of Mathematics at their website at www.atm.org.uk.